Chronic pain is an enormous problem in America at this time as we enter 2018, and it has been that way for a long time. This is a short video, and it will be a simplified discussion of the nature of chronic pain and look at lifestyle factors that we can engage in to hopefully pursue a pain-free life. I recently did a video on the opioid crisis that was in a lot more detail that can be looked at to look in, into more of these details. Uh, but in general, when we look at aches and pains, we typically think of strains, sprains. Really, we get injured, we hurt, and then the pain doesn't go away. What's not part of the conversation typically are the perpetuators of injury. In other words, uh, who's been injured? And when we think about perpetuators, it's so such a faint little word I put on the screen because it, they're not considered. So what are the perpetuators? In other words, who is more likely to develop chronic pain after injury? Which person is this? So the next several slides, I'm going to show who that person is, and it will help uh, one craft lifestyle choices to no longer be that person. And so this pathway that I've illustrated here is actually anatomically correct. It's, it's conversationally called the pain pathway. The nociceptor is uh, referred to commonly as a pain receptor, although it's not technically a pain receptor. Uh, but this nociceptor senses injury, senses changes in inflammatory chemistry. And once activated, this nociceptor, this neuron, transmits information to the ner central nervous system over here in the bottom right that I'm circling right now. This red circle represents central nervous system cells called glial cells. And they release chemistry into this area here uh, between these two neurons called the synapse, which then influences the excitability of this neuron here that's often called the pain transmission neuron that takes information from the spinal cord up into the brain where we experience pain. And uh, all of these connections that we see here, all these connections are all influenced by body chemistry. So here are the four lifestyle factors that have been associated with the expression of inflammation. And ultimately, if someone has all of these going on, or even you know one or two, one can end up with elevated body fat mass, which means they're gonna end up with an elevated body mass index, which is associated with the expression of chronic pain and other chronic diseases. So this image is going to uh, try to create a visual view of how poor lifestyle choices lead to a state of chronic pain. So when we have these five factors present, peripheral cells release inflammatory chemistry to activate the nociceptor. Central cells release inflammatory chemistry in the spinal cord and up in the brain and brain stem. So when we have these five factors present, the human body will produce inflammatory chemistry peripherally as in your muscles and joints, and then centrally as in the nervous system. And the outcome is pain and malaise, feeling unwell. Over time, it becomes worse. Now, people can develop chronic pain without an injury. It just manifests for some people over time because one cannot live their entire life with these lifestyle flame factors without developing either chronic pain or some other chronic disease. In this case, we're talking about chronic pain. And so if one has chronic pain, they are at much greater risk for developing dependency on NSAIDs, Tylenol, and then even worse, the opioid medications. So this is the scenario. And so when people are being treated for chronic pain, most in most cases, these are the determining factors that need to be addressed on top of the given treatment plan. So here is an example of Big Daddy on the couch. After living on too many calories, he developed sick fat syndrome, which I described in a previous video. And this is when his um, the immune cells within inside his adipose tissue mass 
are pumping out pro-inflammatory chemicals. So this is a visual representation of the outcome of living like this. And so this individual will be treated with orthotics and manipulation and rehabilitation and medication and perhaps injections and then perhaps surgery and then potentially this poor person is now uh, stuck on opiates. So we have to address these lifestyle factors. Without addressing these lifestyle factors, we never change the inflammatory state. So obviously top the top three are pretty straightforward what to do. Uh, and then otherwise this uh, YouTube channel and, and my and my website is of course devoted to looking at uh, a pain-free lifestyle in particular with diet. So this belly would not have become huge if he was eating veg vegetation as his primary calorie source. Primary calorie source has to be these foods down here. And so when these foods are the primary calorie source, Big Daddy develops and then these chronic pain factors develop. So in the book, I also discuss supplements that can be added to an anti-inflammatory diet. They're listed here. And unless there is a, an outlier scenario, virtually no one, uh, uh, virtually everyone, can engage in these dietary changes and these, and these supplements. So the idea is to get one's body mass index back to what it was when we were between the ages of 18 and 25 years. Now, if you weigh a lot more than that now, then you gotta make that the goal, to get back to what you were when you were 18 to 25. The average individual was of proper BMI, of proper waist hip ratio. All those markers are discussed in the DeFlame Diet book. So we wanna get back to that BMI. And when that happens, aches and pains uh, often dramatically recede to the point of potentially being pain-free.